Nomads. Welcome to my channel. My name is Liz and this channel is called Simply Homeschool. So if you are new here, I am a homeschool mom. I do all types of videos for homeschool. Um, and if you're a returning subscriber, thanks again you guys for clicking on this thumbnail and showing me some support and watching this video. So if you're new to homeschooling today, I'm going to be talking about five things you should ask yourself before deciding to homeschool, okay? Um, now, these are things that you may have already thought about or you may have not thought about, um, but it's always kind of good before you jump into something to just kind of sit and think a little bit on why you want to homeschool. Um, so let's jump right in. Okay, so jumping into this, um, I want to start out by asking you, why do you want to homeschool? What are the reasons? I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My reasons were, you know, just knowing that I am the one teaching her and influencing her and having her home with me was a huge thing. That was probably the main thing. Um, on top of safety, you know, a lot has been going on in the world and I know we as Christians are not supposed to be fearful. I don't really feel like it was fear driven. I just felt like it was the best thing for us to do, if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, also, it could be a disability, you know, things that they struggle with or things they need help with. It could be bullying. Um, oh, there's so many reasons out there, you guys. Um, my daughter was kind of going through a little bit of um, some stuff during kindergarten, like towards the end of the year, um, that I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I'm not gonna get into all of that, but um, I feel like it was the best decision that we had made for that as well. Um, so yeah, just ask yourself, what are the main reasons? Get a journal, not a journal, get a notebook and just kind of write things down so you have it on paper. And I honestly would suggest you hold on to it because you're gonna go back and wonder, why am I homeschooling? Just because it's hard sometimes. I'm not even going to lie to you and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It is hard. It is hard, but it is worth it. So another thing you want to think about is what you expect out of it. Um, what you expect as the mother and what you expect from your children um, or child. You know, you could expect to have fun, um, to have times of laughter. You can also expect to have a huge challenge in many different things, okay? It could be um, trying to teach them something or them understanding a concept. It could be th getting them to listen to you. It could be them not taking a million breaks. It I mean, there are a lot of challenges, but again, it's worth it. There's, let me just put it like this. Everything in life has challenges, right? And most of the best things in life are a challenge, the most rewarding. So don't look at this as another challenge that you have to like overcome that's, you know, like a job thing or money or something you want to buy. This is like your child's education and not only education, but this is like the way of life. Once you homeschool, it's it changes the dynamic of everything. It truly does. Um, so... I would suggest asking yourself what you expect out of this. Also, on a lighter note, I would expect to have an empty pantry and an empty fridge because they tend to want to eat all the time. It's a battle. It's a battle, you guys. It's a battle. <laughs> also, just expect to know that this is not a fix-all. If there's issues, um, you know, with specific things having to do with school. This is not always something that's actually going to fix it. It's not going to happen right away, but you can work around things to help manage specific things, if that makes sense. I think if you're in specific situations, you'll understand what I mean. So just expect for it to be a challenge and for it to be hard at times. And it's, this is truly like the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to scare you. I just want you to go into this thinking like in in a re reality form and not like, oh, it's going to be wonderful. We're just going to sit around and the kids, I'm going to read to them and they're going to listen and it's going to be wonderful and they're going to be like, thanks, mom. You just taught me that. Guys, it's not like that. I mean, sometimes I guess it could kind of be like that. It's fun and everything, but because that's what I was envisioning. I'm like, oh, I'm going to sit down at the table. She's going to sit with me and... It's just gonna be wonderful all the time it's not it, it is wonderful sometimes though like we have fun 
I'm telling you, we have fun, we laugh. Um, it's kind of cool because some things that you learned in school, obviously you forget about. So you're kind of relearning things with them and you have a better understanding because obviously you're older. So it's pretty cool. So that's something to expect as well. So another thing to think about is how is your support at home? Um, do you have support in homeschooling? Do you have a husband or a wife that's going to work with you through this? Um, do you have maybe a friend or a family member? Um, anybody that, you know, even at church or something like that, just people around you that can listen to you if you're having a hard day or at home maybe, you know, if your husband's there, maybe he could help a little bit or take over a little bit or just you need that support from somebody um, because there are gonna be some times when you feel like you need that. I'm kind of crooked, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, also, for me, I feel super blessed. When I was thinking about doing this, okay, I'm gonna rewind a little bit, just a little bit, okay? Um, if you're new to the channel, this will be all new to you. If you're a subscriber already, you've probably heard me say this in previous videos, but I'm gonna try to say it super fast, okay? So, my daughter went to private school for kindergarten. I taught her pre-school, pre-K, okay? Now, when I was transferring her into a Christian school, I fought with my myself, okay, that I wanted to homeschool her, but I didn't feel like I had the support, okay? Like, my husband, he was cool with it, but, like, I was trying to get my sister into it and my dad and everybody into it, and I don't feel like they were quite on board yet. My sister had a daughter that had been in the same... Um, um, Christian school that my my daughter went into and she is quite a few grades ahead so she's in sixth grade now and my daughter's in second so there you go um, so she wasn't quite ready to pull her daughter out of school since she's been in school she was worried about that so she had other things she was worried about so my point is is I didn't really have that support I wanted her <laughs> to homeschool her kids while I homeschooled mine so we could do it together and like make it like you know bigger and more fun and do co-ops and stuff like that so I decided to put my daughter into kindergarten when she was done in kindergarten towards maybe like I don't know two three months before she got out of kindergarten I was like that is it I want to homeschool I'm gonna do it I want her home with me I want to be the one to do this and my sister was kind of going through her own things that were making her feel like, you know, this, it was kind of, God was leading her into the same direction. So long story, kind of long, but try to make it short. Um, she decided to put her two daughters. So one is one grade behind my daughter. So she's in first. You guys know that if you've been on my channel, first, my daughter's second, and then my niece is sixth now. So we've been homeschooling for two years now, going on three, super excited about that. But so that's the story of that. I have support. I love it. We do co-ops together. They go on field trips together. They're involved in, you know, reading groups together. Um, I love it. It couldn't be any better than that, right? So if you have a support system, and I'm not saying a sister or a friend that's homeschooling, but anybody that can either navigate you or help you um, or just on your hard days, you know, where people aren't like, I told you not to homeschool. You want them to be on your side and to just help you, to hear you out. That is tremendous. Now, if you don't have that, there are places to find it. There are different Facebook book groups. There are channels you can watch on YouTube. There are community groups that do homeschools. Um, there are co-ops, charter schools. There's so many options nowadays. It's kind of crazy. So even if you don't feel like you have the support within your home or within your family, you can find support there. And the mothers, most of the mothers are super kind. So yeah, so that was really long but I'm moving on now. Okay, so the next thing is, what does your homeschool look like in the future? So I wouldn't go into this just thinking, I think I'm gonna try it for the year. No, I would try to think long haul, okay? Um, just because if you think that way on your hard days, it's gonna be easier for you to give up and just be like, I'm throwing in the towel, my kids are going back to school. That's why I said at the beginning of this video, keep your notebook that has the reasons why you want to homeschool because you're gonna wanna reflect on that when things get hard. Um, I know I have. I've thrown that, that I'm sending you to school. 
I've thrown that out there a few times. I am totally guilty of that. What other mom is out there that is guilty of that? And I, I hate doing it. And I think she already knows because she knows how I feel about homeschooling and how I feel about putting her in school away from us. So she knows she's called, she calls my bluff. She knows. Um, but I have pulled that card. So anyways, you are definitely going to want to kind of look at the, the, um, the larger picture with this. You're going to want to look, you know, in the future and not just, I'm going to try it out. So that would be my other suggestion. Okay, so my last thing is, are you prepared for a challenge? Just remember, all great things in life come with challenges. And you're up for it. You could do it. You guys, if I can homeschool, you can homeschool. I'm serious. You know, it's not like it's all on us. We have to figure out everything. We have to do the curriculum. We have to do the planning. Like there are curriculums out there that do the planning for you. Um, I would suggest like, not suggest. I'm not going to suggest because all of us are different. I may love one curriculum. You may hate it. It just depends on the, the, the style of your family, the style of your child. Like it truly just depends. And I'm going to be honest with you. You're not going to find it in the first year you do it. Now, if you do, you're one in a million and I am happy for you. I wish I could have found it in the first year, but I think, and I've only been doing this two years and I know a lot more this year than I did last year. And I'm expecting to know more next year than I did this year. So I think it's a constant like learning, you know, um, and it's a constant roller coaster. So, um, I would just say, be prepared for a challenge. Um, know going into this, that it's not going to always be perfect. Um, no going into this that no matter what you get for curriculum, if it doesn't work, change things up. Um, for me, I am with a Becca, like I said, and I think the main reason that I went through a Becca was because my daughter, when she went to the private school, that's what she was learning through is they used a Becca and I loved the way she was learning. Like I thought it was amazing. She was, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. My throat's crazy. Not crazy like that, but it just... It's been messed up for like a month. Um, I thought I'd throw that out there. Um, now, um, and now that we're a year in, I'm super, or two years in, I'm sorry, I'm super confident and I do co-ops with them. I teach them um, and it just, it gets it's easier, okay? But just know it's a challenge. Just know it's a challenge. And just know what you see on social media and, you know, Instagram photos and day in the lifes and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying that those are not real because they are real, but it's easy to manipulate videos and cut out specific things. So just know that when you're watching a video of a family that's doing um, homeschool, it's not always what it seems to be. Now, I know if I ever did a day in the life, I'm not going to be putting my kids like arguing or screaming or crying. My three-year-old would be screaming and crying. My daughter would be arguing. Um, but I wouldn't put that in there. Not only because I wouldn't want you guys to see that, but because I wouldn't want my child in that situation of where, I don't know, that's kind of embarrassing. They're little. They don't get it. So I'm pretty sure that they cut those out or they put music over it, stuff like that. So when you're watching it and then you're sitting in your homeschool, just know that you're not doing anything wrong, okay, when it doesn't look like what you're watching because you can manipulate stuff like that. So, and I'm not saying that what you're watching is not real because the things you are seeing are real. Um, you're just seeing the happier moments in the day. They're not going to be posting the bad moments during the day if that makes sense. Um, so what you're seeing is real and it's happy and they're enjoying it. And that is what homeschool is. It truly is like you will enjoy it. You guys will laugh. You'll learn. You just won't see that in social media. So my point is just don't look at social media and wonder why your homeschool doesn't look like that. Cause I'm guaranteeing your homeschool does look like that when it's doing good and they're happy and the kids are learning and you're, you're, you're enjoying it. And so don't ever compare yourself to homeschool. Um, I know that I have, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I have, um, channels that I love. I love the women. They're super motivating for me. They kind of ground me sometimes, you know, and make me think. Um, and 
I catch myself looking at what they're doing and I'm like, oh, I wish my homeschool room looked like that or I wish I had that. Why don't I have that? You know, why doesn't my house look like that? Why? I don't know. I just, I'm just telling you this. This is kind of not even having to do with this, but this has to do with being a mom and a human. <laughs> just don't judge yourself upon other people. You're perfect just the way you are. You're perfect. Um, your house is, you know, perfect the way it is. It's everything that you have is is supposed to be. So just don't catch yourself trying to be that somebody else. You know what I mean? That got kind of deep. But I just, I wanted to throw that out there because I know when I was watching a bunch of homeschooling videos when I first started, there was a lot of that going on in my head and I had to just kind of kick myself back a little bit and be like, hold up. I'm where I'm supposed to be. My room's supposed to be this way. How I'm teaching is supposed to be this way. Everybody has bad days. Everybody has good days. So just don't beat yourself up. So again, this is where you need to have that support system. It will help you tremendously. All right, you guys, that is it. This was super long. I'm sorry. I like to ramble and I apologize for that. If you don't like that part, just fast forward through it. Um, I hope some of these made you think. Don't forget to keep your notebooking paper that you write all your reasonings and keep it somewhere safe in your work desk or um, um, I don't know, anywhere. Keep it wherever you want, but just keep it so you have it to go look back on. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video found you guys healthy and happy and be blessed always.